What's up everybody? I'm back with another video game review and this is a any another NES game Rygar released in I think it was 1987. I don't know if that's correct or not. The correct one will be the correct year was out will be in the title. Uh, but it was released on the NES. Um, I was actually a arcade game before being an NES game. Um, though the two games are different, though they were similar but had some differences to them. Uh, then it weren't on, even under the same name, but they are easily distinctable as together. Um, and that arcade game was released in 1986, I think, but I've never played that as far as my knowledge goes. Only ever played the NES version. Another disclaimer before we start, I did not finish Rygar. I played a good amount, um, trying out a bunch of different stuff. I couldn't get very far in the game as like as I would have hoped to, um, just because I was dying a bunch and whatnot, and uh, I was able to... I did consult some uh, re other review-style videos and looked at some other gameplay of the game to help help my notes out but know that um i did not finish the game so that's a disclaimer there's some parts of the game that i missed and maybe i didn't talk i'm not going to talk about here at all or as much so let's but though let's uh let's get into this review um first off i wasn't really expecting much out of this game um but it was actually pretty fun to play it wasn't like the greatest game out there it wasn't like it wasn't absolutely horrid, though, either. It was decent, you know, for what it was. It's a smaller game, you know, it's very simplistic. Uh, definitely a product of the time, um, with the simple control layout and uh, of the NES time and the earlier age of video games, so that makes sense. But it, it makes it more fun to play. Obviously, it's not the greatest game out there. We'll get to it. It's not 100% like super easy like a kids game or whatnot but compared to what i was expecting and also other games like it that i've played it wasn't bad i liked it so uh yep in that regard at least um another kind of an annoying thing though uh there's no story no tutorial uh well there's no established story no tutorial of any kind. There's no indication of what to do. The only indication of like a guide of to go like when you're in the game, the only guide you have to go places is when you go in those doors with the guy who's sitting cross legged with the who's bald and he's like, You need to go here to do this or this is underneath this. That's that's all you get. And even then they're very subtle. Um very what am I looking for? Subtle hints at what to do it's very much a you go in and you got to figure it out yourself you know you're just thrown in this game and figure out what to do um i'm sure a manual would have helped um that's the kind of theme i'm finding with a lot of these nes games is that you probably want the manual to help go through the game or unless you want to consult the walkthrough online and sure you know the, the manuals were a big thing back in the 80s and so i understand that but sucks kind of so heavily reliant on the said manual kind of takes away from the early fun of the game for me um one thing that really pissed me off very early in the game i was up on those one of those high platforms i climbed up the ropes and i was um and i knew there was ground underneath me so i jumped to go to the ground and i died i don't know why i died there was ground there I literally went back and checked, um, but yeah, they make it so if you go up on the second, like you climb up a rope and go up to the next set of screen, you have to climb down the rope in order to, to get back down. You can't just jump down. Um, and again, that's because it's an early game. I'm sure like a remaster of Rygar would figure this out and allow that to happen, but that was very annoying uh, for sure. The music is pretty good in this game. It's not anything stellar, but it's far from like a headache-inducing annoyance. Um, I really, I, I mean, it was it was definitely higher tier music, um, and as you know, it has that very old 
nostalgic type vibe from the NES days that most games had. And it was, it made the game a lot more tolerable because it was made it, you know, more soothing to listen to and enjoy it. Um, and so that was good. So I enjoyed that. Other than that, there really wasn't a huge amount of like sound effects uh, that I, I, I really picked up on or like were very distinct, which is fine. There's really no need to, but it would maybe have been nice. And as far as the graphics of the game, the graphics are pretty average for the time. They're not horrible. They're not anything stellar either. Um, being a 1987 game that's a remastering of an arcade game um, that takes its own twist, you have to think, yeah, it's not going to be. As, almost 40 years later, you have to think, yeah, it's not going to be the greatest uh, uphold. And you'd be right. Um, but it wasn't anything like horrid to look at. There was no abysmal... Uh, like depth perception stuff, like in Crash Bandicoot, there was no, uh, wasn't anything that was just like phantom out of nowhere, um, and so it was just it, there. It's okay, it's nothing great, nothing horrid uh, though either. One thing I didn't really like, and this seems to be a common theme with a lot of people that played Rygar. Uh, and are a fan or not a fan or played the game in general, uh, that's the enemies. They they just pop out of nowhere. And it wouldn't be bad if, but there are, normally, I guess, but there are so many enemies. So many enemies. And they, they pop out from everywhere. They just come out of the ground. Off screen, they spawn and then run right at you. Sometimes they come out of the sky. Some, some of them fall down. There's ones flying through trees. It just gets too much when they're all swarming you like that. Um, and I guess it wouldn't be as bad either if there weren't so many of them, but also you could easily, more easily kill them. Um, because you get in this game and your item, your the item you have is like this slingshot yo-yo thingy mahoover that does literally nothing. I was not able to land a good hit at all with it. I didn't know how to work it at all. I tried my damnedest, but... But you have to be like, it's, it's, that's another thing about learning it yourself. You have to learn it like that, like a snap, because there's enemies running at you. It's, the reaction time is going to be a little delayed because it's an old game. So you've got to uh, take that into account. They're running at you like crazy. They come off screen. They pop out right behind you. Uh, it just becomes so, so much so quickly. I just found it better to jump over the enemies or jump on the enemies when I could um, to get by. Uh, that, that worked as a better method for me um, as, 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 instead of just attacking them. But I know you can't always do that because you got to fight bosses and stuff. So, um, so you know, why why the slingshot thing? It just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um... Um, now I will say, now it's not, this game does have a change in perspective. Um, it's, you know, you enter, a, you go throughout the world and that's actually a pretty large world to, uh, work through too, which is, um, unorthodox of the time. I guess they were still going off with the Legend of Zelda stuff. They both came out in at least North America the same year. Um, but even the Legend of Zelda map, that original game, not nearly as big as this Rygar map is massive but um and like I said it changes perspective you go from one section you're doing like a 2d Mario style uh jumping up and down and killing the enemies and stuff like that that if that felt a lot like Mario and then you go into the other section where you're like in this top down view and you're attacking enemies from the front you can go in all sorts of directions now that felt more like Legend of Zelda style um so, in the change of perspective, from what I saw, it wasn't horrible. It, it does take a little bit of getting used to. Once you figure it out, it's not horrible. But again, you're, you're not going to want to attack the damn enemies anyways, because you're just probably going to jump over them. Uh, it's just not fun at all. But And then, I was exploring around, and I found the get to the end of the level and you go in a door and the guy says you need a crossbow to move on where the fuck do i get a crossbow uh 
uh, there was no items anywhere. Probably missed the spot uh, for sure. Looking back on it, I definitely didn't miss the spot. Um, so yeah, but it's just weird stuff to. The requirements to move on are, have always been annoying for me. Going back to Captain Toad and Crash Bandicoot and the million other games that do that. But uh, this game, it wasn't as annoying because I uh, I kind of fucked up in my pathway of playing this game. But such is life when you are plopped into the middle of a video game you have no experience with and don't know what to do. So... Um, that's my thoughts on Rygar for the NES, my final score. Uh, unofficial final score since I never finished the game. It's only an official score if I finished it. Not finished Rygar, so this is an unofficial score, but I gave it anyways for the video. Um, probably going to have to give this one a good 6 out of 10. Um, it's not abysmal, not horrible by any means, but... Could have been a lot better, especially even for its time, even for 1987. It's going to be a lot better. But they had an arcade game they were going off of, so the limitations are there. So what what they had to work with, I think they did well. So that's going to do it for this game review, and that is going to do it for this video. If you have ever played Rygar, either the version on the arcade or the NES version, I'd love to know your thoughts about it in the comments section down below. And that's going to do it for this video. Again, stay tuned for much more amazing content. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Goodbye.